that level. So if even your star player is kind of the one who maybe got left out of the other lineups and people kind of have given up on him a bit, eh, you're not really starting off that well. Like, think of the other lineups you had where Shox went to Epsilon or where Kenny S was in um, recursive before. They, these teams, at least, you know, like the main superstar, he's going to go crazy, you know, he's going to put on a show and the others, it's up to them, okay? The problem with the others is once you get past Scream, then you've got an even more of an unknown. You've got Foxio or FXO, however you want to say it. And the, the problem with this guy is he has actually shown us some good stuff online recently, but we haven't seen enough to know that he's like a legit star player. Now, I thought actually he was a little bit underwhelming at the lands we saw recently. He's, he's okay sometimes. Online, he's been magical, but there's a lot of players who are magical online and never fully can transition it to offline, you know? So again, we've got a question mark after we were only two names in on the stars. And then the other three, I'm sorry, are just kind of like the players who make up the, the numbers usually in these teams. Like SF's okay, GMX, well, he's kind of average. I don't know, I don't know. Actually, I think he's a little bit below average. I don't think he's that great as a pro. And then Uzi is like, Uzi has been so bad that now if he does okay, people are like, he's not that bad. Like, <laughs> so, oh, God, that's my thoughts. We're going to be jumping in very soon here, but uh, I'm going to push you to a prediction now. You just, you just, we're slamming, uh, slamming them right now. You, it's obviously you're not expecting it, them to really do much. Put it, put, put it to like some numbers. What's the score going to be here on Inferno? Yes, 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 yes. Um, I mean, the man alive though sounds a real life. Anyway. I mean, it is Inferno, which is one of the maps that you tend to get more rounds than anywhere, unless you get completely dominated on P-side. So I'd probably say Nip would win like 16 to 5. All right. I think it'd be a heavy win for Nip. Well, it's unfortunate we didn't get more time to talk about it, but thanks again, uh, Thorin. And uh, all right, guys, we're getting live into Here the game. Um, BST, they're starting off on the CT side. That's ninjas on T. Dream for them. I think this is the. I think, like Thorin has said, it would have been absolute decimation if uh, uh, Nip managed to get CT first. This is a perfect start for BST. Are they? Are they epsilon? Is that? Is that a thing? I think it very well might be. Yes. So this is the the new epsilon line. It still says BST at the top. So I don't want to start speculating on things that might yeah. not be true. But I, we, let's assume they are epsilon. There's no reason why they would be tagging up unless they were. But here we go, Nip here on T side of the Inferno. Making their way up perhaps here actually at the moment. And this, if we look at the overview, could actually end up quite, quite well for them. They're gonna make the move in here. Freiburg distracting and uh, here we go. The ninjas all the way in on the, a bomb site almost uncontested. Plant, to go down. There it is, boom. Deep plant in the bomb site. And now they split off to try to take the frags. But Epsilon have been sticking together. Although they've let the plant go down, they have kept their lines together. So four versus three now with that bomb taken away in, in deep inside the site. And this is going to be difficult for them to actually pull this one off. It's in such an awkward position. I like this from NIP. Great setups coming in, in here post uh, plant. But actually, it's a 2 on 2 at the moment with FXO. Uzi left. He's going to have to go for the deep use. And he actually gets taken down just in time. They're going to get the... I, wow, Uzi actually gets the deep use there. Very great. clutch move there from FXO. Very clutch stuff. And Epsilon, they stuck together and they made it work after giving away the site. Kind of yeah, interesting that, that's round. Just that crossfire they had there, just them, the defuse coming in there, it just set up a, such a perfect crossfire. It forced the T's to come out of that position and face. The plan wasn't great for Nip. I think that was a downfall for them there. If they'd have planted in a more advantageous position, they perhaps could have countered that. But just the fact that App set up with the one that the defuse had started, it was just too strong. The T's were like kind of clambering around, trying to, trying to get any sort of angle they could on the bomb, and it wasn't coming to them. So good stuff from, uh, let's say, Epsilon. Uh, good opening round from them, and it seems quite promising. It looked like that round was slipping away from them there. All right, so a good start definitely is going to bode very well. Of course, Thorin didn't help, uh, didn't give them high regards for his prediction. Yeah, um, with the 16-5 scoreline, and this is. I think I think that's a, when they're starting CT. I think uh, they're always going to get more than five rounds. At yeah. least I'd like to think so. Um, I think. Uh, I think they'll probably end up losing the half. I think NIP will probably step it up again. I think the first half will probably be somewhere in the region of 8-7 to NIP. Um, but I think they will get these next few rounds. We can see NIP will be buying up full the next round. But if we're going to try and get the bomb down here, I don't think that's going to come to fruition. For them. This is going to be any frags available. Zis managed to pick up one of them. It's going to be a two on the four situation now. 
but the Boris is your last man standing on the bomb tower. And no bomb planted, but they managed to get it down in the pistol, so they will be able to get a full AK by this round. And it's going to be difficult for Epsilon to kind of defend this. And we can see that they have got Famuses there, so two Famuses on uh, GMX and SF. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what kind of tactic they actually go for here. I would be calling, we need to go aggressive, get the first pick. It's the only way we're actually going to win this round. So let's try and do something a little bit different, maybe nade down, smoke off banana, and try and get some intel and even just some precedence on the map. So we're going to actually be able to see whether Epsilon like this aggressive banana star, how, they, how far down they're willing to actually go. And so far it looks like they are trying to get some pushing in here. It's going pretty well for them. They're getting some damages. They're really applying that pressure. And they have the opportunity to pull back if they need to. And that's so exactly what they're doing. That's so, so smart. And they didn't give up anything apart from a little bit of position. But they did t do some damage to Freiburg and take out Exist before Ninjas could get the ball rolling with the play. Yeah, that's, that's a perfect play for them. If you can push out there and take one frag and get both players back with no one dying, You've executed that perfectly. No, nothing needs to be like you just need one frag in CS. Just do yourself around. Um, as we talk about one frag, get right manages to get himself one of his own. Takes on GMX under in the apartments. It's going to leave Uzi in a horrible situation. Now we can see the NIP swarming in. He actually manages to go huge there and takes down two of his own. It's going to be a two on four situation now in favour of Epsilon. Yeah, big play from Uzi because imagine if NIP had players in pit right now. It would be next to impossible. But right now, thanks to Uzi, this round is actually doable for them as they come in for this retake. Fiffler in there, quick to defend that library area. And he's going to push for a long range defense there. Jeez. Not going to happen. BSC going to take that round down. And really, off the back of Uzi's uh, defensive play on pit there. That yeah, really it's all, all about those two frags there. That was. Uh, very, very pivotal play for him there. Just made sure he, he landed the first kill and uh, managed to secure the second one just for a bit of dodging and weaving there. And uh, so that was uh, a very important round indeed. Um, that's what I was talking about at the beginning of the round. They needed to ensure they got that first frag just to kind of guarantee themselves uh, a, just an opportunity to win the round as such. I know that sounds a bit silly, but when you have Famuses against AKs, it's very difficult to hold against. So they managed to get that one frag very successfully. And uh, just just to know here, what I'm banging on, we can see Nip have actually opted to buy here. I don't think uh, Epsilon will be expecting this. You can see them going for quite an aggressive push here, and it has paid off. They take that exist there, and that's going to just uh, secure their, their lead even further. It looks like they are really are winning the economy game right now. Yeah, very risky push there from FXO, but you can see that it really paid off massively after you know, the quick scout that mid was safe. Quick peek into second mid, why not? And right now, that really slows down Ninjas in Pajamas because they, they've been spotted. They got spotted. So they can't quickly react, they can't quickly push in as easily because BST will be expecting it. So they've got to create the, you know, the doubt there in the minds of, of uh, BST, or Epsilon rather, as they uh, take over apartments. And now there's a lot is possible, but they do not have bananas. So they're leaning towards an A play here on this round. And it's definitely uh, an important one for them to, to win to stop that money real, you know, really rolling into Epsilon. See the mid smoke there actually landing on the roof of middle. I'm not sure that was went to plan. Um, we've seen a lot of that tonight. Actually. So you can see the plan will actually take down Fixo. And uh, this is the round open up for Nib now. Will this be the one they can get back into this game? 30 seconds remaining. It's going to have to be something Whoa. pretty quick. I'm not sure this is the right call to make with 20, 20 seconds remaining on the clock. Making their way over. You can see the smoke has gone down. It's going to be very difficult for them to get back into this round. They've got a note. Epsilon have got to know, but look at this, this mess up, it's fantastic, most down two, they get all of them in quick succession, they fall like dominoes there in that choke point, and what a good defense from Epsilon, I agree with you, it feels like a, a, a double back like that, you can easily, it's like easily telegraphed too, because there's no time left. As soon as like we saw the smokes going wrong and it looked like they, that tactic wasn't going to work, 20 seconds on the clock, you've got nothing coming in the middle, it's, it was just too obvious. I think they obviously they had to do something, they went, it went all, in, all in on B, but it's just like, Epsilon read it so well, got the smoke down, and just made it just a fortress, they didn't even manage to get a kill. We did the double in. back fake, where they yeah. were at the bottom of the <laughs> yeah. That could, could work. Left, wait till five seconds and then go, <laughs> that's what they should have tried. Could work. <laughs> But we do have a quick little peek there from uh, Epsilon's GMX, who does you know, do, a, do a great effort there on maintaining control of apartments. And we can see that that would have been very crucial here to the success of this round for the ninjas in pajamas, as it would allow them a bit more in the way of options. Um, I think, is that a smoke there going over for, uh, for the plant on the stairs? I think on the site, we will actually be able to get to see that, I think. Let's see the smoke going down there. Yeah, indeed it is. And that's going to allow them, if they get in really quick, for him to just plant in the smoke. Just, they don't want any kills. They don't care about that. They just want distraction and the bomb. But 
it's not going to happen. It's a, no, bit, it's a bit of a telegraph. <laughs> yeah, when, when you've got when you've not putting flashbangs out, it's just going to be very difficult to get the bomb down in that situation. And let's um, let's take a quick look at the scoreboard now. Let's just see who's uh, who's going big for Epsom. We can see Fixer actually and uh, Scream leading the charge there of eight and nine frags respectively. And uh, yeah, here we go. We can see Fiflaren opting to pick up the AWP now. They know they need to change their mentality and kind of they don't seem to be making the opening pick. So maybe this is uh, an opportunity for them to kind of uh, set the tone with the round themselves instead of the CT. He's doing it for them and Fifth Baron narrowly misses out an opportunity there to take down one of the CT players as he runs across middle. And it uh, looks like Fifth Baron might have some company now as he faces and he does take him down. And that's a great opening flag from Nip. And that's potentially could be the start of, the start of their first round here. All right, so we're looking at a 5-0 scoreline for Epsilon and FXGO going to get taken down early on. Both well, however, X is going to taken down on the pick attempt towards the B bomb site. And they haven't really made a big move on the map just yet, but Freiburg at least will get SF, who was peeking a little aggressively. And after that first frag they made, it feels like maybe even you could say is a bit, you know, a bit eager, a bit, uh, a bit greedy. But either way, we see Epsilon making the move back to the CT spawn now to try to deal this incoming threat on the A bomb site. Bomb is definitely going to go down momentarily here. It will set up to do this, but look at this. A lot of times to kill. Looks like Epsilon up close. Right there on the A-bomb site, GMX long range now with the orb. He's going to have to go save that though, and uh, I mean, it kind of just went wrong for them, just just a bit of... Well, it seems like that, that orb from the flower and actually came to fruition for them. Like, he managed to get two opening frags and uh, got, his, got his team straight back into this game. So, like, it, it was a good change of... Uh, position for Nip and uh, I think that they should continue with it. If uh, Fifth Land can find those frags and open up the map like that then it's uh, definitely worth him keeping it and seeing what he can do. We can see uh, GMX uh, he, they know where he is, they know they need to get that AWP off him. It would be great for their economy. They can just take that 5k and uh, put it in their own bag. It's going to be harder than they thought, but Forrest finally takes it out. And uh, yeah, good round from Nip. And that's, uh, I think this might be a little bit of a turning point. I think they might be able to string a few rounds together here just from the, seeing the way that they're um, the CTs were reacting to that, but as we say that, it looks like FX Zero is actually pick up an orb from himself, and I think he did get picked by Fifth Land last round, but maybe he fancies his, uh, his chances this time. He's seen how he was facing and thinks he can maybe challenge him. One thing that surprised me was the aggressiveness on Banana after kills had happened, so you're kind of like peeking into an angle where they yeah. could very well be watching. It's like one, it's like one thing to just go there really fast and be aggressive because of the timing, and there's another to like to actually just go through a choke point when they are sitting on the angle like this. But Scream's going to make the frag happen. But a one-for-one -one trade, is that really what you want? He should have, like, he had the opportunity to get out of that then. Like, I, I've always said to players, like, as soon as you get one frag, especially when you're going for an aggressive push, just fall back. You've won the round for your team. Just, uh, and now he's given the, the advantage to the terrorists. And now, that, like we said before, the CDs have to spread quite thinly across the map, and they'll find themselves in a difficult situation. If Fifth Lauren makes a great shot there. Uh, huge stuff from him, and that's going to open up the beast on bombsite completely. Yeah, that was fantastic. And with the bomb, it should get uh, stepped up by by get right, I should think, over at T slope, and that's going to amount to a round here for the ninjas. As Izzy is left in a very horrible situation, looks like a pause is being called for. So uh, we are going to be going to a pause, and as soon as we know the uh, reason for this pause, okay, apparently there is. It is as would be expected, the usual reason for. a for delays, DDoS thing. Yeah, you 2014. Or a dis oh, it's a disconnect. Okay. Unless unless he's being DDoSed by Thorin. Strange things have happened. <laughs> <laughs> Thorin needs to make his prediction come true. Do you think he, would he stoop so low? Uh, I don't think so. But I, th I don't think it's his style. No, he's just, he likes, likes to dish out the, the cold comments. That's, yeah. uh, that's, that's where he stands. But there we go. Um, let's just let's, let's just break down what we've seen so far. Um, so it's currently five two in favour of Epsilon. It seems like they opened up very strongly. They actually managed to get the five nil on the board. But now Nip have managed to string a couple of rounds together. And like I said, I thought that first round was going to be the turning point for them. I think this is where they could uh, kind of find their footing a little bit and try and get back into this game. We can see Piflaren actually has been doing pretty pretty good work with that orb. Actually, he's managed to pick up uh, five frags so far. And uh, it'll be interesting to see whether he keeps it up or whether they actually um, decide to go, go back to the five AKs. I think for now, they just need to stick to how they're doing it. It seems like the picks are coming to them. And uh, we can see that the, the CTs now, looks like their money situation isn't great. So they, especially with someone disconnecting, I assume that he's going to get his money back. But um, it, yep. th this could be potentially the, the third round coming in favor for Nip. Yeah, it's, um, 
it's it's really good. It bows very well for Epsilon, though. I, th I feel like uh, NIP are going to be much stronger on the CT side. Yes. They, they show a lot of strength on the CT side with very very good team play and strong strong passive. Like yep. not too eager, not not too not too risky, but just enough, just just present enough on the map. Whereas um, uh, right now we're seeing that I feel like Epsilon are kind of struggling to find the right balance there. They they are kind of we saw some movements from them where. They, it seemed like needless fights were taken after advantages or, or the exactly. risk was too that, high that's, to give away. That's the main thing we've seen, like, especially from players are scream. We know how good was, he is. Yeah. And we know well, how the player of his caliber can get away with stuff like that. But especially when you're against, against a team like Nip that can punish you for mistakes almost instantaneously, you need to make sure you're taking advantage of the positions you get and um, making sure you like, uh, take advantage of those situations and actually get the frag and guarantee the round. That's the most important thing. Yeah, and it's, it's one of those things as well when we, when we look at the, the screen situation where you, you, you're you going for that peak. What is your, your thinking? Like, are you going to get a one-on-one? -on -one? Or, I mean, is that... Is, is that it's because that's the only thing that can happen. And if you get the one-on-one, -on -one, you get the kill. That's great. But if you trade one for one, then that's, like you said, that's yeah. never, ever good for the no, CTs because like then you have to spread out and they can get a four and you two. Are, you are either going all in with both players, yeah. kind of uh, pushing down and smoking off, nading, and you're trying to push the Ts off or kind of meet them and win the spray battle with the M4s. But if you're going alone to kind of this face and kind of go on a whim and see what happens, making one frag is all you need. Fall back, survive. That's the round one. Technically, that should be your round in the bag. So yeah. if you get one frag go for another one and die, you get to feel a little bit silly because that's when you actually put your team in a disadvantage. I don't CT. Did he get pot flashed either? I don't know if he did. He didn't. I don't think he, he didn't. Did. He wrote the first frag and he had about two or three seconds to fall back. He stayed and then uh, got taken out. But I think we're probably dwelling a little bit too much on that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> to, be, uh, to be fair, there was. I think SF had a, had a similar moment um, yeah. on, on Banana as well where there's just kind of like a... I think maybe communication errors it could be as well. But either way, it feels like that's Banana has been a, a case where they've been dropping the ball a little bit. Sure. And um, that that's allowed NIP... I mean, small edges like this is kind of uh, seemingly has allowed NIP to get some edge back into the game and given them the options that they need to exploit. And of course, after a very strong five-round start from Epsilon, they're looking in a in good shape to actually have a great run against NIP. Potentially which, uh, three rounds in, the r in a row, though, in a deficit for them. So this could be the start of the the ninjas in pajamas coming Well, if we go to Thorin's prediction, the, uh, Epsilon are not winning <laughs> rounds now. <laughs> That's it, they're done. They're, they're, it's NIP all the way. They're going to win 14 in a row if, if Thorin is right. Fair enough. Well, But uh, remember, guys, you can also you can still like ha uh, win skins by actually... if. If we haven't hit 70,000 uh, uh, followers yet, rather, on the Twitch channel, follow now, we, and at 70k, we will get those, uh, those gifts going out on the stream to all the people that are watching. And also, of course, we have the Twitter competition going on. If you can guess what the location is, wh which city will the LAN finals be held in, then I just send that to at face it, and uh, you could be one of the lucky winners for M4A1S Alloy uh, as, a, as a nice pickup for those skins. And that's uh, a lovely skin, isn't it? Lovely it's it's skin. a nice one. And you know what? The thing, the thing about M3-1S versus M3-4, like, we saw Vettis Pro there. They didn't have any M3-A4s. I know some teams do like it, but it's yeah. just more expensive. It's just you get kind of less options doing it because you just have less money. Exactly. So I think especially when it has the, the advantage of being silent as well, especially when smokes get landing, landing on the bomb sites and you can kind of actually use them to your advantage sometimes. Yeah, being able yeah. to sit in the smoke or sit behind the smoke and be able to spray through it is uh, it's such an advantage. And uh, that's why I see, I think we're seeing a lot more silence M4s coming out these days. Like It's actually quite rare to actually see the, the full M4A4 come out just because I, I feel like teams have kind of caught on to the fact that, like you said, the economy and the, the only the only problem with it is the, the amount of bullets you get with it. Obviously, people do yeah, struggle with that. Like, if you do a bit too cavalier with it to begin with, you're going to you're gonna find yourself with no bullets whatsoever. But it seems like most teams have kind of uh, locked it down now and kind of prefer that, that weapon uh, as a whole. And I think it kind of, it does make it look a lot cooler as well when you get the kind of crisp couple of like, two bullet shots and stuff with the silence M4. It just looks so brilliant when it happens. But yeah, it's, it's an interesting one. I mean, when I was talking to, uh, to Threat about it, like Threat's opinion is he just he's just against the M4A4. It's like it's it, it's just worse. Like in in his opinion, like the extra bullets just aren't worth it. Yeah, it's it's too expensive. Mm -hmm. And y as the CTs, you want as much money as possible. I mean, uh, with the you know with the um, the T's, your options aren't quite as heavily restricted when you're operating operating on a low economy, but yes. it's not quite the same for the CTs. CTs, you need everything available. You need all five players on smoke grenades. You need kits, especially, like, we know how expensive kits are in CSGO. Like yeah, yeah, they're really expensive. So, like, nice. the fact you can save yourself $400 just by buying 
a gun that's just as good or even better. Like you, you'd be silly just to have a preference just because you don't like the the silencer or something like that. So, yeah. um, I think you're completely. Spray's right easier to control as well. Yeah. Well, there you go. This is just 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 pull down a little bit. Oh, sorry. Well, wait. Yes, pull down. Because yes. I play it on invert, so for me, it's oh, like really? all, like all God, backwards. That's, that sounds horrible. Yeah. I know a lot of Quakers play with inverts, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm a pilot. <laughs> Racing wheel and pedals, that's what I use. That's what I used to use. Um, but there we go. It looks like um, we might be getting almost ready to go in, I can hear in my ear. Um, yeah. So we can uh, jump back into game, perhaps, and go. Uh, you guys can see the odds right down up there. It looks like uh, LIP winning, uh, <laughs> like. Pretty heavily. Honestly, I'm surprised that it's actually not a little bit more, but I suppose um, there's a lot of French fans out there who really believe in... Well, uh, to be honest, I guess that's one. they are having a good... They are good winning right now, so and they're like, if they can get, I'd say they're going to need at least 10 just to kind of have a good half and give themselves a realistic chance of getting back into this. Yeah, Again, sure. like this is the, thir the third French lineup we've seen tonight, and it's so difficult to call these teams, especially like... French DS is so good, what the hell? Yeah, it's just, it's just, it's crazy. It's just booming right now. We see there's another new lineup. This is the third new lineup we've casted tonight. It's, it's really difficult for me, especially to kind of give predictions as to why things going to happen, just because I've never casted this team. Obviously, we've casted all of these players in some capacity, but we haven't well, never... Even for them, like they haven't played enough together that they are going to show us something that's necessarily all too stable just yet maybe they need some weeks to well exactly really flesh so it out like when you're against like currently the hot the best team in the world right now it's gonna be very difficult and that's obviously why the stats are s so stacked in uh nip's favor but it looks like uh we might be getting back into this one now that was great feeling nice work and um <laughs> here we go again so five yeah, yeah, two yeah. in favor of bst or should we say epsilon now and it looks like they have actually opted before they go to eco they have actually opted for a famous and uh, max seven buy here so fifflaren and co with uh, the awp in hand will be kind of just if they're smart, just kind of just be feeling out the map and seeing if there's any opportunities to pick. They really don't want to run into that match there. You can see uh, Forrest is slowly working on control here for apartments. Just making sure bedroom is clear before he moves in. And uh, that's, you know, with the Molotov, very, very good usage with the Molotov there to make that safe, that play through the, the balcony safe. So it get right with him as well. And you can see the rest of his team moving up banana slowly. So they're really keeping their options open at the moment. With there that it comes. Dropped. So Forrest and Get Right can get a pick, they can make a call, but it looks like it, you know, if, if that doesn't happen, it's uh, their fire single to be close here. To see what happens in the ensuing moments. They should they should understand that the economy for Epsilon is weak as well. Yeah, but they don't want to assume like anything can happen in CSGO. You can never just assume it's a full clean eco. There's always some sort of twist in the tail as it goes. It's never it's never as easy as no, they've got no guns. See that it looks like Epsilon actually have done the perfect defense in SF going absolutely huge here. Maybe have four kills on the cards here. And uh, if Lance is the last man remaining, he will not be able to save himself. There's going to be no charge whatsoever. Great defense there. Maybe he's going to pick at the end, but uh, let's see if it's really not going to influence him too, too much. I mean, he, he, can, get, uh, he can get dropped. And... Uh, I've, I've, uh, you know, make sure your Steam account is linked to your, your Switch account, guys. I've just, this just in. Um, we're giving, we're doing the giveaway regardless of hitting the follow account, so screw it. Skins for life, easy skins, easy life. That's what they um, say, someone says that. <laughs> <laughs> someone has definitely said that, that before. That should so. be the tagline of, of the that. So. Well, here we go. FXYO actually taking down the point man in Freiburg for an IP, and that's going to be a huge gap to take down, and that leaves him in a 5 and 4 situation. This is good now. We can see absolutely Epsilon taking the first pick and falling back to a defensive stance. Now they don't need to be aggressive, they just need to stay alive now and force the T to come to the bomb side. They have the man advantage. To say that, they get the two man advantage now. 5 on 3 situation in favor um, of Epsilon. I feel like they could have worked with that more. They, had, they pushed Epsilon back really, really far, all the way back to the graveyard of yep. but then they kept pushing them. Instead of just taking mid and then like seeing, okay, we've got yeah. mid control. Like we're really deep in mid now. They have no idea where we can be. But either way, uh, we're, we're seeing NIP get kicked off one by one at this point. This forest, or, you know, remaining. And getting some frags here would be really, really nice. We can actually see, it looks like a pause coming from the right over there in the chat. So we have to see what happens there, guys. And place. it looks like a forest had a crash. And we can see that in action right now. What can we? Oh, I see. So he's he's not moving on the server right now. There yeah. it is. Okay, is I understand now. Oh, it's been this, this this evening's been riddled with uh, pauses and bugs tonight. DDoSs, crashes, power cuts. Look, We've had it all. Look, that's the culprit right there. Look at him. 
a very fetching uh, beret lovely. and mask. Lovely that beret, mask. I, I'm not sure what to call it. <laughs> oh, I, <didn't laughs> I did the honourable thing and they didn't knife him. That's, that's quite nice to see. That is a very good point, actually. I, I kind of that, That's actually a bit of a pet peeve of mine. Yeah. That's That kind of sucks when, peop when people actually do that, like actually just knifing. I like it. James in production showing off all of his skins. Wow. Good, good, good job, James. Good so job. He's so strong. And for those of you <laughs> who are fans of James, he will be casting with me um, for the NA Cup late into the morning if you're if you're from Europe, but of course you know in the evening if you're from America, it's uh, so that'd be good times. So you can catch me and James later for that. Of course, this is the last match of tonight's European um, face face it league first day of games and and. Uh, we, uh, apparently we're giving a gift box away, but they all disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> That's what James was trying to do there. He's trying to do that live it on the stream, but no gift box for you guys. It's been stolen out of his account. I don't know what's happened there. We'll have to yeah, we'll figure out what happened. The skins are coming. He's working on it. He's frantically. We can see the, the terror in his eyes now. He looks frantically for the skin boxes. <laughs> where, have, the skin. where have they gone? We'll find them. Don't worry. It's all. It's all fine. As we wait now, uh, yet another crash. I think Forrest is the man who got taken down there. Um, let's just have a look at the scoreboard if we can. Let's see who's uh, firing on all cylinders. We can see uh, Epsilon is going to be FXIO and Scream uh, with 11 and 12 frags, respectively. And we can see Fifth Laren, um and Exist with 6 and 5 themselves. Uh, I'm not sure how well Forrest is doing. I can't remember him going especially big. I think he's probably sat around second or third place. Well, okay, a question I have about Epsilon's lineup here and, and the you know, maybe expand on what Thorin was talking about in a more yeah. in a more positive light, <laughs> because that was pretty negative. Let's let's be honest. Yeah. So, for something that we've seen tonight with all the French teams is that we've seen something that's that's more fresh, because a lot of the teams, a lot of the players in their lineups have been in those lineups for quite some time, and uh, you know, from whatever you can say about the benefits of s of holding a lineup, there can be a level of stagnancy that that can be experienced there. Yeah, and I definitely. Think we did see that from certain players. I think Scream was one of those players. I feel like in Titan. He did seem maybe not to, to really find his his uh, sweet spot uh, over the last you know many months. Perhaps you know this could be a kind of a an effect like we saw. I, th I feel like JW benefited with a new fanatic because a lot of pressure was alleviated. He can play his game better. I feel definitely like, with like when you miss, he has a when he better. He's not in the shadow of uh, Kenny S anymore. And when you play with the same people for so long and you kind of get stuck in a rut, or almost like you have your set tactics and no one perhaps is putting the efforts in or you kind of fall out with certain players. It's just not the same as what it used to be. You kind of feel like a, a fresh start and a kind of new mentality. And I think in a team like this, he, he's probably more suited. Like he, he's probably he's the, the big name in the team. He's the, the, main, the main event of that whole, that whole lineup. And I think he'll probably be more comfortable with that situation. He, they, he'll be just allowed to do what he wants about being uh, like kind of a sh shunned down by like, uh, existence or anything like that. He won't be told what to do. I think he'll be just allowed free reign of the map. And I think that's where a player like Scream will kind of find his form again and kind of re roll, back the, roll back the glory days of uh, one bullet headshots every single round all over the map. But um, James can't find his skins. Oh, no. The skins have gone. They're showing on the website, but not the inventory. So we'll try and see if we can sort it out to get those giveaways going. Never fear. Well, it looks like Forrest is back on the server. So at least something has gone to plan right now. So he's, he's back on. And it looks like we'll be jumping straight back in. Guns are being thrown around. And we can see NIP will actually be opting to go on eco this round. We can see they've got a couple of PC-50s into the mix. I'll make that four, actually. And uh, one Glock on Freiburg. And uh, this is... Uh, Quite an important round for Epsilon. They really don't want to lose this one. They just want to start getting the momentum back in their favor now. And yeah, we are back into this. And as you said, you can just quickly just take a scope on the money situation. Obviously, we're seeing a save here from Ninjas, Jarmus, as they are attempting to have enough money in the following rounds to actually buy up here. How many have they lost in the row, actually? I've, I'm not sure, actually. I've I, think it's just, I think it's just one in the row so far. They, they, got, the, they okay. got their set. They got two rounds in the row themselves. Lost one, and that's why they've got... Right, right. Okay. So we'll, we're going to see now exactly how this comes to pass. If they can get a couple of kills here, maybe pick up some extra uh, cash, maybe save a weapon. That would be fantastic. You can see they're making moves up mid here. And we're going to see uh, FX here is in position to deal with this. Got that orb. There goes the defense. Misses the shot. They are just encroaching on his position. Ever fast. He's got the support he needs, though. And there comes the knife. And there's not going to happen. Fifth are in denied by screen. And that could have actually been pretty nice <laughs> to get a knife kill there. A lot of money. Get that... Uh, 
get the all back and play for himself. But um, we can see they've kind of opted to go for obviously just a, an economy issue here. Um, if they're going to be doing the four, five AK setup, we didn't see it go too well for them so far. I think this is a very important round. Um, this is the point where it looks like it could get a little bit dangerous. Nine rounds on the board with Epsilon, two for Ninja Pajamas, only four rounds many after this one. So it'll be interesting to see what, uh, what how this one pans out and see whether Nip can uh, find it. I think they, they, Nip probably won at least four. Just to kind of, we know how strong they can be on the CT, so we want to just make sure they have enough to work with to actually get past the pistol round if they do lose it, just kind of build, build to build upon. So, important round, I think. I think that both teams will be aware of what's going on. It looks like this is going to be some sort of... Oh, yeah. I think they'll probably be sending in someone like Freiburg with the yeah. smoke grenades just to kind of cause a distraction. That would be the, the most logical thing to do here. Yeah, it looks like Fle uh, Freiburg will be making his way in. But he's going to be met by screen and get taken down. And that is the fake here. He has managed to keep two CTs there. And uh, the T's now will be jumping out. Uzi's going to be in this pit to switch again. Will he be able to take down two players? Is he going to pick up one before he does go down? And we've got a 3 and 3 situation on our hands with the bomb. It is over at A, but not a lot of time to plan, if any at all. We have a smoke there, but it's the coverage is pretty appalling. And Forrest is going to get that bomb down in the middle of the site. Not the most ideal plant in the world, but not the most ideal post-plant setup in the world. And look at this. This could have, this could have been the man to make the difference with his flanking position, but he got caught out. He got sniffed out early by FXO. Forrest does drop Scream. And now we're in a 2 on 2 once again with that bomb ticking away. Plenty of time left for Epsilon to make this happen though as they move in together. But Epsilon's FX show, he has made a to make a little bit more awkward close range. SF goes down, the orb is left in play, but finally it does get removed very quickly rather, and there you go, 8-3. Yeah. Good stuff from Nip there, kind of a the big round, they definitely needed to get themselves back into it. We can see they picked up the orb again, so they'll be able to start running these setups with uh, the AWP and picking, opening the map up for themselves, and I think we might see an actual orb battle go ahead here. It looks like both players will be making their way over to that mid area, and you can see whether it's going to be FXIO or Fifth Lauren winning this orb battle, both players quite tentatively facing here. Who's going to go for it first? Oh, it looks like uh, it could be a back down from uh, Epsilon there. No, no warp battle today. No, and no, I think that's very smart as well. If you feel like there is an orb running on the other team, that is, that, that's always going to be a good situation for them to get like find an easy, quick frag. And an easy, quick frag puts a lot of pressure on the CT side, like losing someone really early. So, but it looks like Freiburg is going to get himself straight in there with a the double kill. Doesn't care at all, Freiburg. By himself as well, it's just, just in there, like that's what he's so good at, like just getting in and getting those opening frags and when he manages to get through, it's so important, like what well, great work from him and this looks like this could be the, the turning point for Nip now, they're going to get their fourth round on the board unless uh, Epsilon have something really dramatic in the, up their sleeve, I think they just will be going oh for a safe hit, we see get right in a very like, sneaky position He's just now. always there as well, like, like Farrow got those two kills, they got the bomb down, get right didn't move, he just, he's sitting there, he's he like lying in the brush like a predator right now. He knows Wait what's to going catch on. his prey. He wants those, wants those frags. Look how patient he is. He's just sitting there in the foliage. FX, you're going to rattle off a shot in the distance to take down Exist as uh, the remaining players who get hunted down here with Epsilon from NIP. They're slowly converging on their position towards A here. Terrorists win. Time looks like not anything found there at the end of the time. So. Eight to four the score now as NIP start coming back into this one with another. Well, that round was really, really just for all Freiburg. Yeah, definitely. There's opening two frags. That's kind of the round one, just in a, just in one entry. Just because the, the, the CTs don't have any players there, they completely have to fall back. They have no choice but to send players to that bomb site. Obviously, there's leaving uh, one or two pe people left on A. It's just it's very difficult to come back once you lose both people with no frags in return. But here we go. We go into the 13th round now. These next few rounds are going to be very important for both teams. I think I did say that um, Nip will get a win the half, but obviously uh, Epsilon have already done that. But So any rounds now uh, Nip can get will be very important to them just because they need to start racking up enough just to build something to build upon for their CTR. So let's see what happens here. And uh, right now, see just the standard map control being taken by NIP. Working their way slowly into apartments. But actually the defense from apartments is quite scary. They actually had two players uh, at the end of the apps there. And Forest, oh my god. FX show just not paying attention towards Boiler when it really mattered. And Forest with a quick clean kill. And that's going to allow them to 
get an, an aggression going towards the A bomb side. They still do have some time, so they can play kind of misinformation game a little bit, but perhaps keeping it simple would be the best play here for NIP as they make their way in. GMX, all kind of trying to get in with way through that smoke, catching two players in the back of the head. There's the number three. GMX looking for the fourth, won't get it, but he already did way more than he ever needed to do for Epsilon to secure this one. And let's just get right left in the one on three. And he's got the Galil. No bomb for him though, he's going to come out of the corner. They're all together, Garen going for it, but it's not going to be enough. And a 9-4, what a wonderfully saved round there by GMX. Yeah, just uh, a, two, a tiny gap in the smoke from uh, Nip there, not kind of a perfect smoke grenade from them, allowed him to kind of get that vision and kind of just get a lovely first kill, the second one through the smoke, and it kind of was, uh, all fell apart from Nip from there. And uh, we go into the 14th round now. That's going to be nine rounds in favor of Epsilon, uh, four for Nip. And we can see them actually doing a very forced buy here. We can see, oh, we actually have a pause again. And so Another pause coming into play here. I believe no it's. Um, it, it does seem to be that NIP are experiencing issues. Uh, I just hope that it could be a long one. No, it won't be a long one. That's that's what I like to hear. That's much better than rifle. <laughs> look, at that, look, look at that! I just you know put the expectations and smash them straight afterwards. It's, uh, it's a good thing. Anyway, um, it looks like a, it's a very good situation here for Epsilon to say the least. Nine rounds already, and we saw we saw the odds. We saw the odds. There's like 15% of people or 20% of people. I'm like sure that. a lot of people are kind of... They're worried for the skins right now. The skins, the precious, precious skins are slipping away, it looks like. I think, like we said, we can never, never rule out Nip, though. They, they're just the team that can pull results out of nowhere, it seems. But um, It's definitely something that they do repeatedly. I mean, look at ESL 1. It was just a testament to NIP. They were just, they looked, it looked like a weak tournament for them, but they managed to, in the moment they needed, to peak their skill to make it happen, even if it was awkward. They made it happen, because that's what NIP do. Exactly. And here we go, we're back into the into the match, guys, thank, thankfully, and we have again, you know, the very standard opening for this round right now is uh, we see Freiburg, the king banana. <laughs> Trying to make his, his uh, presence known. There we go. It looks like uh, he's dead. Oh, God. This making his way up to the, uh, the middle area there. It looks like a couple of good opening frags there from Nip. And uh, it's going to be left in a 3 2 situation now. Next frag is going to tie this round up, I think. Uzi is the one to get it, and it's going to leave it in a 3 2 situation in favor of the one. And it's going to be very difficult for them to get into this round now. Uzi, a great triple there. I think he. <laughs> did he? That, was, that was a quad. That was a quad kill. Did, yeah. uh, did Uzi actually hear from. From Thor and he's like, man, I gotta show shut this guy out. I gotta show shut him this guy up, man. He's, he keeps talking me down. And uh, showing what he's made of. And, uh, but then again, uh, Thorin did say that people just you know, say, but whenever he plays good, they they turn it around. But anyway, let's not get into all that. Because he's been playing amazingly. He's secured some very crucial rounds for yes. his team. These these rounds on the team side are incredibly important against an IP. And let's let's see now. What well, the reaction is here from NIP? They ha oh, they might be. Oh, this is this could be a set play where they they have a set play um, with this onto the B bomb site, which is usually very fantastic when they pull it off. They manage to get the smokes <coughs> in the right spots on the bomb site, and they just charge in the pistol armor. It's, it's usually pretty effective. Let's see how it goes for them. Get make their way in there. The Scream's got other ideas about this thing. Well, they did get the smokes off, but. This is fifth enough. Can he get the bomb down? Oh my god, this is no time at all to get the bomb down. They're all on top of him. They didn't really go quite according to plan. I think they're missing a Molotov. One of the, one of the things they also do is they Molotov the, the back boxes yes, as well. Yes, you need so that to flush the, the CTs out. Yeah. You don't you need someone to face. You need an opportunity to kill them. If they're not facing at all, then uh, it's not really going to work in your favor. But um, that's an interesting scoreline. Like 11-4, this looks like it could actually go in Epsilon's favor. Like It's yeah. all going to come <laughs> down mean, to what? this... Uh, it's always going to come down to this pistol, and I, in my opinion, I think the T, the T half is the easier pistol round, just because you have the opportunity to kind of Glock armor up, and especially a team on this. I don't think they're going to rely on many utilities here. They're just going to be kind of run it, running together. We can see Uzi is actually going to opt for a smoke and two flashbangs while his teammates get the four armors, and it could be nice to see. With, I'd like them to just kind of just choose somewhere and just get in there, maybe uh, use the the smoke and flashbangs to fake somewhere. But let's see what they can do. Uh, looks like they're going to be kind of opting for a standard kind of uh, two-on-two setup. 
Yeah, we've had a feeling out the map. And Forrest actually making his way down there. Almost got caught with his hands down as uh, Getbright takes down GMX in the benign area. What do you think the purpose of the smoke is? Where can that smoke really be most effectively used? Because it's just one smoke, so it's not going to have any support. I guess smokes. if they went towards uh, B bombs, I'd just smoking off CT spawn. This is one of the main choke points. And then if you're going up middle, just either smoking off quad or arch there, just to kind of just to kind of utilize. One, you need to choose one place to go as it were. There you go. The smoke is again. They just see the B play coming from a mile away, and it's easy making. Get it right. Oh, he's gonna go for the knife. Oh, oh, barely. Oh, no. Just missing it. I like how he switched to scream there, so we could see Get Right moving in almost slow Zooming motion. into him, and there we yeah, go. So Scream's got a bit of a mountain to climb. He's gonna win this one. We know how good he is, but. Good enough to take down three ninjas in pajamas. Oh, looking at him, taking him, ready to take him down. He isn't, and uh, that's going to be a big round for Nip. Obviously, they needed that one, and it's going to be a very important run indeed. It was so smart from, from NIP to actually quickly assess what was happening. They, they, we saw that they very, very quickly rotated someone all the way towards the B-bomb site. And it uh, looks like there's another pause coming in uh, called by Freiburg there. So we ha we'll have to see what actually is happening over there. Uh, apparently, there is DDoS issue. DDoS DDoS issues. I think someone's DDoSing my brain right now. <laughs> uh, but uh, Forrest is apparently getting 50% loss, we can see in the chat there. So not a fun situation. I mean, this, this inevitably happens on Counter-Strike, but that's part of the great thing about this tournament is that we're going to have LAN finals. We're going to have you know, six teams that get to go to the LAN. So that's going to be fantastic. And uh, James can't, still can't find his skins. The inventory is not looking kindly upon him today. And uh, we'll have to see if that can that can be resolved. Anyway, we'll have to see how long this takes. I'm waiting for any updates. We're gonna have a double giveaway tomorrow to make up for well, the skin nice. shenanigans tonight. So we'll have a triple one the next day. Yeah, and you've got uh, Tosspot and Henry G actually casting tomorrow. Um, there's there's so many awesome matches. Just this is the thing about this tournament. There's amazing matches every single every single time. Yeah, absolutely. every single match is great. Every single day, like I couldn't believe when I saw the lineup of uh, games we had. Lot of I thought before normally when you do this kind of you have like a, a night of games. There's always like a few like you're not really looking forward to the damn squares. Mid-tier teams. And it's like something. okay, but I saw this today. Like even like I've been out of the out of the internet for about a week, but just seeing the lineup of players, like seeing all the French teams coming to play, so this is really is all top tier stuff. Every game's got like. Uh, top end players playing and it's been fantastic so far. And it's just more of that to come. It never ends in this tournament. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. I can't wait to see if, if teams really start to abuse the fact that they can see the map picks in advance. As you said, you, you know, you feel like you don't, teams, you're not a fan of making it, overcomplicating things. That's right. People always like used to tell me in teams, oh yeah, we've got this demo available. We know what they're going to do on this map. And I think, well, they've probably thought exactly the same thing about us and they're probably going to do something different just to counter us. So I think you just need to play your game as it comes on the day and kind of just kind of react to the situation there. If you dwell too much on trying to anti-strap uh, anti people, sorry, yep. then you kind of fall into the pits and when they don't do that, what you're expecting them to do, you kind of, oh God, I don't know, what do we do now? We'll kind of put ourselves in this horrible position or stack in this certain area. But anyway, we are back. It looks like the DDoS issue has been resolved and we can see uh, Epsilon are going to be the team on the full Head Armour and CZ by here. So, uh, big investment from them. They will be uh, all in for this one. We can see Nip have got a very defensive setup here. Not going to be actually showing any prominence in the middle here. We've just got this. He needs to find a frag now if he's going to have a chance of uh, locking down this split. I love this position library there uh, from Exist. It's not like a lot of the They maximize the range, but looks like in you know, a torrent of pressure starting to come in here as everyone gets gunned down. Get right. Flanking master. Coming in from behind, taking them all out, and uh, NP with a quick, very quick uh, clean up there. Yeah. And there was, there was no bomb plant though, so you can see that uh, their money situation, you know, is uh, definitely not looking super hot. No, definitely not. Those, this is where you get yourself into almost a, a sort of a rut when it comes to the economy. When you go for a, something all in like that and you don't get a, a single plan down, it's, just, it's very difficult to get back into it. But here we go. We can see uh, the terrorists here looking like they're kind of obviously towards the B bomb. So you can see the players getting very aggressively up there with the bomb as well. Be interesting to see whether they try and go in here. I think it would just be more kind of a uh, fake tactic here to try to work out where the CDs are playing. Forest managed to take down the screen. And that's going to open up the fragging for our NIP. Yeah, we'll have to see how this actually turns out because, as you said, you know they, they just removed the, the guys off of Banana, gives them that freedom to kind of roam the map and use the rest of the time 
and, and operate under security, if you will. And we see that Forest, you know, tries to just cut a security with a knife, just pushing in the apps, trying to find out what's going on. Does catch some players there. You know, you know, not be able to do much there as well. But again, to just, you know, remind people, if, if you're, you know, as a little tip here, is if you Ooh. lose, um, if you lose the first round, the pistol round, and you don't get the bomb down, you have to eco twice anyway, so you can always afford to do a pistol armor. Yes. I mean, you just you should just always pistol armor or pistol pistol with no armor. You know, something something to that extent, so you can actually buy. But you have to eco twice anyways and get that buy in, and you might as well you know, pressure their economy and uh, keep keep things uh, even. E well, to be honest, we're seeing one in three eco rounds actually won. <laughs> So it's, it's, it's still. I think we're still finding the balance with CSGO. Yeah. It seems like the Ecos still are a little bit too strong. I think we might have cracked it now with the CZ being uh, being uh, yeah. higher in price. But um, let's, see, let's see what happens. Here we go. It's, this is not an Eco round. This is uh, a full buy here for Epsilon. We can see him here kind of making their way and all the stuff in that bedroom and going to be making their way towards a bomb site. As we say, that the bomb is actually headed towards B. Yeah, so they seem to be... Uh, they, they, great, they gained a lot of real estate right now. They got... Palm is most in the control. Fiffler and is get, get, he got tagged enough for him to fall back now. He's not going to want to get the day. Pop flashed over. Get right, going to get himself a frag on GMX. The second followed up onto Uzi as well. And SF FX screen left over towards the EA site here. And I feel like they would. I feel like what would have been really good for them was to just double back onto a B after taking so much control. Look how far up they are in mid. That yeah. would have been so nice. But now that option is really. Not available at all. Now the time just to get the bomb. They are not left with many options here. Yeah, you can see them. They're, they're, there's 20 seconds remaining in the clock. I think they're probably just going to save for that. Looks like they'll be making their way to the bomb site. SF actually manages to open the frag game. So he manages to have one of his own. They will actually manage to get the bomb down here. They've actually turned, made something out of nothing. And uh, this next frag will be very important indeed. Is, uh, there it is. Freiburg manages to do it. It's going to leave Scream in a 2 on 1 situation now. Scream. Ready, ready and waiting, and get right and Freiburg creeping in from library side. Both, both there. Boom! One taken down by Screams. Amazing headshot. Looking for the next kill, not going to find it. Get right will take him out, and a good round there from NIP on the retake. And again, another pause coming in as, uh, as uh, unfortunately another crash coming in for Forest. So Forest is off the server once again, and we. We will eventually get there. We've we've done 20 of 30 rounds, or rather, we're going to be going on, going on to the 20th round. So, we're getting there slowly but surely. Very <laughs> slowly, it looks like. Can we please stop DDoSing the players? We just want to watch a lovely game of Counter Strike. Yeah, this is getting a bit a bit much, though, isn't it? So, um, someone bet a lot of money on uh, on Epsilon. I guess it, th this is the problem with what was betting, yeah. isn't it? Like it does it does attract this kind of malicious activity, but. Um, it's, it's sad to see, unfortunately. It, it seems to be happening a bit more recently. Uh, well, guys, I mean, you have this, this uh, moment to check out the Facebook platform as well. Play, just play some pickup games. And like I said previously, a lot of top players, actually, you can actually find them playing those pickup yep. games. You can find all sorts of characters playing the pickups. And you get to, get to explore some 128 tick action, which is completely different from matchmaking. It's a completely different game. There's actually a lot of uh, top players who don't really bother with matchmaking because it's, it's, it's a different style of shooting as well because it yep. just doesn't react the same way. A lot of the bullets aren't registering, so you have to change how you how you shoot so it's actually effective. So it's it's just a bit strange and uh if you want to get the real tournament experience, it's it, you have to do it on 128 tick. And uh, it's not land, but it's at least a good tick rate. The closest you can get to it by not being out of land. Yeah, <laughs> and you do get to veto servers, so you do get to play on servers that are better for you. Yeah, so I think people are just looking for that kind of uh more kind of that proper Esports experience. I think matchmaking doesn't perhaps provide that fully. Like it's getting there slowly, mm. but I think we need to rely on these platforms just to kind of give that full experience of how Counter Strike should be played and how the pros actually play. Like you said, 128 tick servers is what people are playing on in these officials, and it's like it's the it's the proper CS, and that's where you can see the proper skill come into play. Is uh, yep. all the flick shots are registered and all bullets should be hitting. So, uh, have we seen the player? Is it Forrest? He's getting DDoS. Is he able to get back on yet? He's right. still off the server. I'm sure he'll be back momentarily. We'll update you guys as we learn more. But uh, but yeah, I was going to make a point. It's going to be awesome. But I can't remember what it was now. God damn it. About DDoS? About DDoS? No. I don't want to give them the time of day. I don't give them any exposure. Please. <laughs> Please. Either way, we'll, s we'll let you guys know if this uh, changes. Should we go to a break? Is, is, it th is the situation that bad? I'll see if I can...
the situation's still unknown, so we'll, we'll keep you guys in the loop. Anyway, Henry G. Hello. So you said to me off camera, you, you're not really able to play much at the moment, and you're not able to. Oh, well, I I think I I haven't really played properly CS:GO at, at all, to be honest. I think I I started my full time career once uh, once I I quit playing Source and CS:GO came out, and I was one of the original players to go out to Valve and kind of give my opinion on the game and stuff like that. Um, and it looks like oh, we're going back. Getting back the camera onto us while we have this like, nice discussion into Henry G. Parks. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get deep into your, into your life now. We're going to learn everything this, this, about this you. This is what we can think of to, to spill some time. So, yeah, um, for me, casting has been a good outlet to kind of keep myself relevant in the scene and kind of uh, uh, have actually some sort of uh, recognition still. I don't play right. anymore, so it's good to be... I don't cast or stream or anything, but I just do kind of events and one-off bits and pieces like that. So you, you have to do... I did, I did a Gfinity and ESL. I've done iSeries, so... Hopefully I'll be at more events soon and kind of you see me more and more on the scene. I think more people are getting aware of who I am, uh, which would be nice to see. And then uh, I know you're here kind of almost every week, aren't you? So I'm going to be around. You're, you're, you're <laughs> I'll around. Be around. You're, always, you're always here. But this is the first time I've actually been in Faces. So uh, thank you very much for having me. I hope yeah, I, of course. I think I, hopefully I'll be coming back tomorrow. If um, yeah, I unless mean, the message went horribly wrong and I'm not aware of it. <laughs> we'll be here all night waiting to finish this. You're not going anywhere. <laughs> I might as well just wait till tomorrow's games. Um, it looks like... Uh, this. Th we're gonna go. We are gonna go to a break. It looks yeah. like Henry G's past wasn't that interesting. So yeah, I was, gonna, gonna, I was gonna ask you what your favorite animal was because that was pretty interesting to me. Uh, chinchilla. Chinchilla. All right. There you go. We're gonna go to a break, guys. We'll be back once we know more about this match. We're currently 11 to 8 in favor of Epsilon. So I'd say, uh, well, don't go anywhere. We'll be back soon. <laughs>